This is Omar Kassim when we give you the talk. A straight farming with legacy of many from the best of the field. Today we have a special guest here who in just a few years have achieved great achievements. Have great achievements. Just to let you know that we have a live broadcast from the factory as well to expand and multiply learning. It gives me a great honor to invite, invite Ms. Edith Kurban for joining us. She is a graduate statistician at the Royal Society, Royal Statistics Society in the UK, and she has earned a BS from University College London and an MS from Oxford University. So she has a rich background. And Edith Kurban is an advanced analytics and a data science expert with an academic background in supply statistics. She has over six years of experience working across financial services, serving private and public sector clients. Pedal also served as AI and analytics learning and development head in her current role at the working care. Pedal is the managing director of Frontier Technology Institute, FTI, Pakistan's premier data science institute. Please welcome us as she shared big, uh, shares about data science. The next picture. Assalamualaikum everyone. It's quite an audience today. Not the usual for me. So we normally take audience of like under 40, but now this is a big audience. Um, I know the slide says data science is the next big thing. I think it's the next big thing in Pakistan. Globally, it is the present. Um, just to give you a quick background about myself, I know Omar has done a good job. Uh, introducing me, but I want to give you a thorough pattern about myself so that you develop trust in me, like who am I talking, right? Um, academically, so basically I graduated, I did my A-levels from St. Patrick's High School, Karachi, so I am uh, a Karachiite. Um, I then went to the UK, to London, to do my bachelor's in statistics and economics. Um, initially, I wanted to be a computer engineer, then I wanted to be a policewoman, Putting a name. Then I wanted to be a lawyer, but uh, yeah, the judiciary wasn't doing very well in Pakistan at that time. So yeah, so I ended up doing my statistics and economics from University College London, and that's where my passion for statistics grew. And I started learning about these concepts of like data science, machine learning, data the next big thing, so on and so forth. Before I before I joined industry, I wanted to specialize in something because bachelors we go. Sorry, modules separate with their maths view, their economics view, their so on and so forth. Um, so I went to Oxford University. I did my specialization in applied statistics, and from then on, I only wanted to apply to data science roles. Um, in between UCL and Oxford, I did a, I, a, there was a big thing around investment banking, okay, sub investment banking girl. So I did a job. I did an internship at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, as well for nine weeks. And over there, I realized that is not something that is for me. Like I cannot sit there, look at PowerPoints, look at credit notes, and just be like, "Ye parlo aur isko ye loan de do," for example. So yeah. So when I was at Oxford, I was looking for relevant data science roles, and then I came, I applied to a few companies. I got an offer from Ernst and Young. I got an offer from De Deloitte in the UK, and then I did my own research that uh, Deloitte was obviously taking the lead in being, being the analytics firm. You might, has anyone heard of Deloitte here? It, 
it was an audio firm. Now we market ourselves as an analytics and technology firm, essentially. So yeah, so I ended up in Deloitte. I was a data scientist to start with. I then got promoted very quickly to a senior data scientist. So I was doing all sorts of modeling, um, reporting, business intelligence, so on and so forth. And now I am managing data analytics teams. So I have been with the firm for six and a bit years. Then my brother, Conan Prabhan, he was doing his MS from Columbia University. He then ended up um, doing uh, his job in some analytics consulting firm in the, in the US. And we then started this collaboration, Yacha Pakistan, made a green shirt, who's smiling. Who does it get offshore to? Normal analytics ka kaam ho gaya, reporting ka kaam ho gaya, kahaan jata hai? Kis mulk mein jata hai? Go anywhere, to any organization. Normally India jata hai. Kyun? Kyunke unki jo badi badi engineering universities hain, they're not stealing engineering. They are telling you the applicability of the power of coding, right? Coding se computer scientists ko nahi aati. Se wo engineer ko nahi aati. Coding is a basic life skill now, as I say. It's a life skill, right? If you want to make faster, better decisions, and you want to read data quickly and manipulate it quickly, you need to know how to code. Now, I'm not saying code as a computer scientist, ke pura software bana liya, usko ke. there are languages which help you get there, right? All you need to do is ingest data, read it, exploratory data analysis, and the result is in front of you. So yeah, so most of the jobs were being offshore to like our neighboring countries, and I realized that Pakistan has so talent, hai, what are they doing? We also have great engineering universities. We also have these big institutions like IPA, so on and so forth. What are people doing? So that's where the idea came from. But they don't know how to utilize it and make it relevant to the current economy and the current market, right? So that's how we started the Frontier Technology Institute, where we give out data science certifications. Right, so that's a brief introduction about myself. Now, getting straight into the topic, data science is the next big thing for Pakistan. How many of you in the room have heard this word data science? Just a show of hands. About half of you? What what does what does data science mean? What does data science mean to you? What have you heard about it? Someone can say something or I will pick. <laughs> yes, <laughs> science of data. Um, anyone else? There are no stupid answers, so please. To extract some information from a big pool of data. Absolutely, extract some information from a big pool of data. Yes. Is it something related to artificial intelligence or something like robotics and something? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the umbrella includes artificial intelligence, robotics, automation. Anyone else? What does it do? When you once you extract information, what do you do with it? In what positions, actionable insights? Identifying patterns. Relevant information provided. Yeah, projections, predictions, forecasting. Yes, yes. Decision making, right? So, data science is the art of intelligent decision making, but faster and better, and of course, very intelligent, right? Why are we bringing this to Pakistan? Why now, right? Why, why Pakistan? So many explain to you. Why now? I mean, you must have. I mean, internet pe sab jaate hain, YouTube pe, Facebook pe. Kisi ne ye articles kabi dekhe hain? Data is the new oil. Yes. What does it mean when they say data is the new oil? What does it mean to you? It has so much to explore. It has so much. So much to explore. It has exceeded uh, in value. Uh, Absolutely. Very precious. Exactly, bring them new business, make them more money, right? Oil may Saudi come Saudi jo wo hai countries. Kitna paisa bana hai unhe tail pe, tail pe. Ab ye hai ki data is so itna pithora of data is available, right? Now the question comes in: Do we have the power to manipulate it and make informed decisions? Can we target the right customers? Can we market the right products, right? Can we reduce our cost? Can we increase our sales? Abhi pharma companies may be hai ke, how do we improve our sales, right? There are 10 pharma companies all producing the same product, right? With plus minus, for example. How do we get the competitive edge, right? 
competitive edge कैसे आएगी? How do we market it to the right people at the right time in the right place? How do we reduce the cost of our input so that medicine का cost कम हो जाए? So that we make better margins, right? All these decisions can be aided through better manipulation of data. So that is what data science is. Without going into these uh, articles, I'm sure you all have access to Google and the internet and you can all read up on it. Let's go to the next slide. So use case of data science, fine. I'll cover this in a, in a little while. Um, aap logo ki general job everyday life hai. Usme se mujhe example dein ki data science kaha use ho hai. Koi bhi example dein. E-commerce, Supermarkets, e-commerce, contactless, or Personal life में कहाँ use हो रहा है? Facebook, Facebook ads, Facebook, social media, all mobile data, social media, क्या आप लोग data generate करते हैं? Absolutely right. You guys, exactly. आप ही तो generate करते हैं. इतना data है आप लोगों के बारे में. Google के पास, Facebook के पास, Instagram के पास. कि अगर वो चाहे तो आपको manipulate भी उसी तरीके से कर सकते हैं. And they do, right? When you go on to YouTube, you, you look for a certain video and then the next day, or even in a few minutes, they say recommend it for you. What is that? That is? Exactly. When you search for a certain product or you buy for a certain product, or even when you look online for a certain product and you don't end up buying it, they push it to your Facebook. Exactly, right? females ka back to read, they don't end up with females thinking a lot before buying a product, right? So, they're looking for it, but they're not buying it. So you get push notifications, right? Buy this bag, buy this bag, 5% off here, 2% off here, and then eventually say, yeah, read it, right? That is the power of data science. The ability to manipulate you into buying products, right? Increasing organization sales. That is one way. Or for example, then, Personal life, professional life, where you have worked with yourself. Tracking health indicators. Tracking health indicators, yeah. What else? But recently, the electric company has also been using their apps. So you can track whatever is your past and your present. Absolutely. So the point of this question is that we, as people, as we professionals and organizations, we need to start realizing that we are surrounded by data. Even right now, me speaking right now and this voice going to Facebook Live is generating a lot of unstructured data, right? I mean, Facebook I live feature daldi. Are you, and I'm not, or maybe you guys are not stupid enough to see that live feature bus abhi ID and then it'll be eradicated somewhere. They are storing this information, right? This is where the idea of big data and cloud comes in, right? The ability to store vast amounts of data, not just structured, not just semi-structured, but also unstructured data. Right, so give you, I mean, before I give you examples, what do we mean by unstructured data? What do we mean by that? Give me a few examples in the room. Text. Text. Ban on you for speaking. <laughs> Someone else in the room. Does not have a pattern. Does not have any passwords. Yeah, does not have any passwords. Cannot be recorded in row and column format, right? Quantitative data, this is structured. Hota hai na ki age, height, weight. Exactly. Qualitative data. People providing feedback on a medicine. People giving feedback on an organization. People posting online. Focus groups. All this is unstructured data, and it has always been there. The reason why data science is a big topic now is that us as humans with the right technologies, we have now the power to manipulate it faster, quicker, and better. Why? Because the technologies has, have improved, right? Previously, we didn't have cloud computing, now we have, now we have cloud computing. So we have the ability to analyze loads of data in a very short span of time. So that is why data science is such a big thing. And I think us as a nation, we need to start investing our people to develop this skill so that we end up in the right organizations, we do right researches, and we build the right products and solutions. Right. Um, how much time do I have? Am I talking too much or? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, lots of time. Fine. 
So I'm going to give you a few examples of the use cases that I have worked with or my team has worked with in the UK. And then maybe I'll ask around the room, what have you worked in um, as part of Farm Evo or any other organization that you represent essentially? Um, I mean, I'm not going to stick to like what's there. So I'll just give you an example of a major, major, major pharmaceutical company that I worked with in the last two years. So massive, massive, massive pharmaceutical company cannot name it because of NDA and cannot disclose the revenue because if I do, then you'll know what company I'm talking about. So this company came to us and they said, um, we need to, so they divide the company by science units. So I don't know how many of you, so science units are basically departments in a company. So oncology is one, um, something else is one, blah, blah, blah. And they said across all our science units, what we want to do is we want to identify where we're spending so much and we want to reduce our costs because our competitors are working on a slightly lower cost base. And if we do, if we beat them by even 1%, I think a few percentages, we will be the best pharmaceutical because we're saving so much and our margins are so high. And I think you might know as uh, people from the pharma industry that 8% be manufactured. What's other? So basically they were looking at a saving of 500 million, right? To save. So what we did was, we looked across all their science units, we gathered all their data, and then we started analyzing So just to give you like a very, very minor example, which is could be relevant to you guys, is like one department was doing a lot of clinical research um, and they were using three types of gloves, right? Small, medium, large. Now, them as an organization, they didn't realize that every glove is not necessary. So through data analysis, we found out that small, medium, large, they're all getting bought at the same rate. There's this inventory buildup, but they're not getting used at the same rate. So normally people in the organization, they generally go for medium. So why are we spending on small and large size jobs, right? And that a human mind cannot tell because this is a big inventory of data. How would you know, right? So you have to build a hypothesis, then you have to test it. So when we did our analysis, we realized we actually don't need to purchase small and large for like X number of months because that stock can last for a long time because not many people are opting for those. So that's how, that was one way that we helped them reduce their cost. Now I hope I not talk too much here. So an open discussion with you guys, have you come across such an example within the organization that you work in where you have used data to come to make a sensible decision, which has impacted the business in some shape or form. If I get no answers, I will pick. So people start thinking. Because I know everyone has worked with data. Everyone from Excel spreadsheets to PowerPoint to Word. Everyone has worked with data in the room. So how have you helped an organization make a decision? Yes. हम लोग जब एजुकेशन बनाते हैं अपने रिसोर्सेज की तो हम लोग रीजन वाइज देख रहे होते हैं हमें पता होता है फॉर एग्जांपल अगर लोहा रीजन है तो वहां कंजम्पशन वाली रिसोर्सेज की ज्यादा होगी कंपेयर टू बंगलो या कोयटा तो हम वहां हम ज्यादा एजुकेट कर रहे होते हैं अपने रिसोर्सेज कंपेयर टू बीच रीजन तो हम डेटा यूज कर रहे होते हैं उस वजह हमें कितने नंबर ऑफ मतलब पैक्स या जो भी हमारे रिसोर्सेज हमारे एजुकेट कर एब्सोल्युटली राइट सो दैट इज अ प्राइम एग्जांपल ऑफ जियोस्पेशल स्लैश लोकेशन एनालिटिक्स Giving you a very interesting example, so I also worked on a project, but this is finance related, banking related, but it would be used in any organization because they came to us saying, Hamara Ekna Bada Bank, major bank, major, major bank in the UK, Pakistan Bidhi Thaab Shai Dikna Nahi Hai. They came to us saying, Ke our branches are not doing well, right? Do we need this many branches? Where do you suggest that we close off our branches because people have come, start using mobile banking, right? So how can we use all this data that we've generated on the footfall of people in branches and how can we strategically reduce our branches across the nation? So that was a massive project for us, which was essentially using geospatial analytics and not just that, customer profiles. To, so, okay, so just uh, uh, getting a step back here. So to answer a certain question, for example, location, question, and you don't just need location data, right? You need all the variables, right? 
So to answer this location-based question for the bank, we didn't just use their geospatial location data, we also analyzed customer profiles, we analyzed their customer staff experience, so on and so forth. We brought all these data sets together and then we started analyzing it. And then we realized that branches in the city, in, in main city, where people go for work, are not doing so well. We would assume that they would, right? Because there's so many people during the day who are the bank or Sarah and Nam But the branches in the coastal areas in the suburbia were doing well. Now, what is the main reason in your head that could be? Why are the branches in the city not doing well and coastal is other chi company? Internet banking. It's about the traffic or maybe the issues of the brain and all Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all very legitimate hypotheses, right? But the main reason that we found out was, I mean, you said mobile banking, which is which is a very correlated kind of reason. But the main reason was because in the city, there's a lot of youngsters like you and I, right? And we are very technologically advanced. So I, we don't need to go to the bank. Digital pay, saving daldi, transfer kar diya, usko pay kar diya, usko pay kar diya. We don't step into the bank. Pakistan, the Pirvi Shahid looks, they do step into the bank. I don't know that much. But in the UK, in the past, I don't know how many, I've been in the UK for 10 years. I haven't been to the bank branch where I bank with for the past eight. I haven't. I just, that's it. But all my banking is through my phone, my app. But coastal me kyun zyada tha? Because once people become older, they're not working. A, they're retired. B, they ha don't have the technological, you know, skill ke wo mobile use kar so that's why in the coastal area, the bank branches are absolutely needed because that generation wants to have walk and check and So that is the main difference, right? Young and old population. So then we realized that city mein out of eight branches, close off seven. Put one in the center because they're not getting used. Coastal way, keep the ongoing challenge, the ongoing branches, right? But the challenge that the company took was how do we make our people digitally capable? How do we do that? So in those branches, they also not just reduced cost by closing the branches, they also launched a digital drive initiative where they had tech experts within the branch and they were teaching older people how to use mobile apps and how to use online banking and so on and so forth. This is how businesses now in this day and age make decisions. We look up at you and you number and you just don't have it. Right? I see a lot of smiles in the room. Everybody knows how to we look up. I remember when I started, they said we look up to Anna Chaya. So yeah, so Excel is old age now. We need to start moving technologies, right? So as a data scientist, I'm not saying everybody in the room needs to learn how to code. But everybody in the room needs to learn how to use those softwares that data scientists use. Kisi ne suna? Acha, aap log apne room mein, is room mein. Kitne log reporting, business intelligence, management information packs banate hain? How many people? One. What do you use? Achha, business objects? Power BI. Power BI, that's very good. That's very good. That's very good. So Power BI is a new tool. So abroad, like people are normally using uh, Tableau, ClickView, Power BI. Um, they're also in the site in the back end, they're using like for organizations to ease data integration, all that they're using Alteryx. I don't know how many of you have heard about Alteryx. Um, then as a data scientist, you use like Python programming if you want to do some sort of advanced stuff like predictive modeling. How many medicines am I going to sell in the next five years? How many medicines am I going to sell in the next year, in the next two years, in the next three years, in the next five years? How do you go about doing that? Excel will not help you with big data. So to enable you to manipulate big data, you need to learn these technologies. You need to know the basic strategies that are or an approach that a data scientist takes to solve a business problem. So let me give you a very hypothetical example. 
as farm ego, as I mentioned before. You want to understand which, how do I become competitive in the market? I have this product, but so and so company also has this product. How do I make sure I reduce the cost? And how do I make sure I increase my sales of that product? How are you going to do that? What are the key steps that you want to take in this approach? What is step one? Excel guru, what are you going to do? We first take the data, past data, and we analyze it. And where do we invest? And uh, where do we have to close? And that is the thing we do uh, our intelligence. Right. So he just said we want to A, get access to data. But so he said historical data. We historical data, we will take one year. So he will give you a year to prediction, right? What happened in one year? What happened in one year? Seasonality, time speed, just going to get there. To make better models, you need lots of data. So you will, in order to make your model better, you will take more than like maybe five, six years, ten years, depending on the industry trend, right? You take like historical data, say for example, for the past ten years. Collate it. What is the biggest challenge that you face while doing that, while collecting data? We have to just uh, structure the data. Structure the data. Yeah, massive, right? Massive. So as a, as a data scientist, the biggest Biggest, biggest challenge and the most time that we spend on is a access to data. Obviously, takes a while because organizations are obsolete. Legacy system, wo aani ra, wo aare, wo galat aare, the variables are recorded incorrectly, so on and so forth. So, data cleanup normally for a data scientist takes like 80 to 70 to 80 percent of their time because modeling goes. It's easy, right? You log into Python, put a library in, pretty good model is there. Cost cutting is also possible if you have SAP and ERP. What do you say? This is uh, old. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it has been used, SAP has been used, but to intelligently, to, because SAP, I don't know which algorithm it's running on, right? It doesn't have the latest algorithms that are now proven to have the best accuracy, right? So, I mean, SAP is there. SAP is a, where, like a software that has been developed, which organizations have implemented, and it gives you like a report. But you as a human, how are you going to say, Acha, which cost should I be actually be investing in to reduce, right? You can't answer these questions through a report generated by a software which probably has not been updated or God knows when, or if it has, what is the intentions of getting those updates? So the idea essentially is that for organizations, for institutions, both private, public, financial, so on, they need to have this skill set within the organization. When I work with organizations, like another big uh, pharmaceutical company that we work with, can't name, uh, but different to the one that I previously talked about, they did not even have a data and analytics capability, which we helped them set up because they have this so much data on their patients, hospital admissions, who had GS because hospitals seem to make coffee, both the alliances team. But they had no way to analyze and store it somewhere, right? So we basically established a data and analytics capability where we said, okay, this is going to be your chief data and analytics officer. strategy These are going to be your data scientists. These are going to be your data engineers, architects, so on and so forth. So once you have that kind of capability set up within the organization, which obviously for us is like future, I don't know, futuristic chat. But when you have this capability, you as an organization are better, better able to make decisions, right? Better able to control your revenue, increase it, reduce it, so on and so forth. And us as a country, I mean, we are generating so much data. How we need that skill set, that power to make intelligent decisions. Any questions in the room so far? Yes. <coughs> Market strategy. Go to market strategy. Go to market strategy. Yes, what's your question? This is something which the client is selling. For example, we have a product which we launched in the And when we launch the product, it's related to that product. In three months, we have to the product. Why? Different. 
Yes, that's a very good question. So, okay, open question back to you. In your sense, how would you put it? No. Why say probably the trade and the bike trade? I think about local and private. What are the things? If you when we launch that product, we would like to see how many patients are actually available, how many prescribers are available, all the many products. So uh, by doing that, both all data and then understanding the market, we launch the product. Many a time is a is a actually medical science which evolved very quick. So one data was in publication before we launched, and soon after launch the data published, and we came to know that it's not a better one in having some side effects and kind of problems. So the doctor then stopped prescribing the new version that we have launched. So within three months or six months or maybe yeah, three months is, is not you know the right uh, statement, but yeah, in a year time. Then we decide rather than wasting our time and energy and money on a product which is not acceptable by the medical community, that's the focus. So, I mean, you basically answered the question, right? Once you're explaining, so there's two sides. One is product development, right? While you're developing products, some new research comes in and kind of your, all your work has become obsolete. But just to give you an example, when I was working with that major pharmaceutical, phases of the clinical trials came one, two, three, four, right? And they said most of the products don't even make it to phase four, I think, yes. right? Most yeah, of them. What is it like 80% or even more, right? And what's the reason? Because the research gets, another research gets published, side effects come up, something else happens in the market, right? So that is one, that is separate data analysis problem, right? How do you make clinical trials so relevant that you have the right cohorts for placebo and your actual medicine, right? So that's one side of research where you use data science to make the right decision. Yes, the right, right hypothesis. Now you asked a question around how do we make sure that the product launch is successful, right? How would you go about this as a data science problem? You have, it's not the first product that you've launched, right? You must have launched so many different products in the past, right? So what do you do? In statistics, what in data science, what we do is we categorize it. Is the product related to a certain disease? And then we look at the historic trends of relevant or similar products that we've launched in that disease field, right? And then we look at the performance. And we also analyze who, and then that's one data that you want to collect, right? You want to get the historical data on relevant products. Again, for example, I don't know, diabetes ka koi product are before launching a new diabetes product, you need to do historical data analysis on the products that you already have in the market for that relevant disease. That's one. Second thing to look at is, is diabetes going to be a pre prevalent problem in the future? Do I have patients, which is a bad thing to assume, that more Pakistanis are going to end up with diabetes, right? More Pakistanis are going to end up with diabetes. So you need to do that analysis also. And see if in five years time, there are more diabetic people in the population, then they definitely need a better cure. Or why am I launching this product? Because my previous three diabetes drugs did not do so well or they had side effects. So why did they have side effects? A. How can I improve those B? And if that has been scratched, how can I implement that um, kind of update, update my new product that I'm launching? So there is multiple angles as a data scientist that you have to look at before you launch a product. So it's not just that I build a product and I just do that research and I just do that without thinking about it. You have to look at relevant products in the market. You also have to look at competitor. Right? Competitor has launched diabetes products and why are they successful and why are they failing, for example. Right? So then when you bucket all the successful ones into one category and then you analyze the characteristics of those why were they popular? And maybe that something from that which also we call the data scientist has to have business acumen. But normally a data scientist cannot have all of that. So we normally work with someone in the industry and say, this is my research. You add on why the business element to it. Yeah. Two questions. First, how big is the data when even you know, working in healthcare, working in the digital space, I had no idea. And in a conference recently, I learned about it. So, 
can talk about that. What do you mean when you say big data? Number two, <laughs> yeah. number two uh, you give two examples of these big, massive pharmaceutical companies who actually approach you, which shows that they have their in house capability to do that. So, my question is is it uh, so difficult that even these massive you know, home pharma companies in the West, you know, they don't have this capability? Good question. I'm going to answer the second one first and then I'm going to come to what is big data. So, the point wasn't that these companies don't have the capability. They do have data scientists. I wouldn't say they don't. I mean, I'm going to, rep to answer it from the Deloitte perspective. So, we also, we also do a lot of strategy, right? So when you get the data, that's what a data scientist does. So they have in-house data scientists, but they don't know how to approach. What is the strategy that they can take? And in an organization, there's always conflicts of interest. The CEO wants something else. The CIO wants something else. CFO wants something else. The product development, he wants something else, right? So there's always conflicts of interest. So when an organization comes to us saying, we have this problem, we want to solve it, it's not a matter of we don't have the capability. So it, there are multiple factors. So one is they don't have the capacity, right? So they have a team of data scientists, but they're already involved in clinical research, for example. That's one. B, they haven't thought about it strategically, right? Because these are pharmaceutical companies. They're not strategic organizations. How do we approach a problem that's happening in the market? They're probably just looking at it from their own lens, but they don't know what's happening with the competitor. So that is the kind of uh, different, like, value add that consulting firm brings because we have worked with probably if there are 10 medical pharmaceutical companies we probably have worked with eight so we will bring the perspective from all those eight and then we'll solve the problem so just to simplify my answer to your question is it's not a matter of they don't have the skill they have the skill one is they don't have the capacity and b they lack the market intelligence that is needed to solve a data science problem right so when they came to us saying we want to reduce our cost, the first question that we asked as a technology consulting firm was why? Why do you want to reduce your cost? And then we started analyzing the competitors within the cost base. Once we know the competitor cost base, then we know what we want to achieve. Right? Do we want to go lower? Do we want to kind of break even with them? So on and so forth. So that's the kind of element that we bring, and then we work with them to then strategize. We don't obviously disclose the knowledge that we have gained from another client, but we use that to build a solution for that company. So it's kind of two problem. Now, any questions? Your answer was doing what we we are working on a product and product category very feasible. We have the data, we have the data from the market, I am the data that we have data. And we know what is the market or uh, the disease profile is and how we will put and up that data. So we are actually predicting what is going to be our market share, market mechanism, and we can only use this data analytics for our project to go live or something. So what is that difference between what you will give it to us or what is data scientist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a data scientist basically has the know-how of what algorithm to apply to a certain problem, right? So I don't know what algorithm that your data scientists are applying to a certain problem. A good data scientist will never have a bias, right? And he will always have a strategic approach. I algorithm I'm not an data scientist. I have algorithm, I have regression and logistics. So the result will But is it the right result? Is it the most accurate result that I can achieve? So the differentiating factor that Frontier Technology Institute is teaching our students is we're going to cover everything. We're going to start from the basics. We're going to start from Python 101, right? data How do we ingest it into our system, right? How do we read it? A. Basics of Python programming, very simple. Then the next step. We don't just want to go to the but jump through the critical model of those people. No. We want to we want to give people the business acumen to allow them to understand the problem in the first place. Is it a predictable problem? Is it a supervised machine learning problem? 
is it an unsupervised machine learning problem and there are ways to identify that. So those are the strategies that we teach. Now, before I apply supervised and unsupervised game of Alana, I want to first explore my data. That is the biggest differentiating factor into any model's accuracy. Agar aapne us data ko sahi tarike se explore nahi kiya, you are never going to end up with the right results. A very good example that I want to share with you and you can read up on it in your own time, there's something called Simpsons Paradox. Is there a nice Simpsons Paradox? Ke mein? Anyone? Oh, <laughs> just know about the cartoon. That's also a good start. Um, so, Simpsons Paradox is a lot of research we think just like without going into the technicalities and the variables, they were basically showing positive correlation between two variables, right? Do you know what positive correlation is? They said that is the very strong positive correlation. And then upon deeper analysis, they found out actually it's not strong positive correlation. If you cluster the data into male and female, then for female it's inverse and for male it's positive. But as an organization, they made the wrong decision because they categorized males and females into one pool and they said, yeah, if you do this, then it will for example. Very basic example of Simpsons Paradox, you can read up the details whenever you get time. Um, so yeah, so that's what we teach. Exploratory data analysis is absolutely key to understand the distribution of the problem, right? Is it not local distributions, statistical distributions? Normal distribution hair, Poisson hair, MK hair, where you understand the distributions, then you apply descriptive statistics on it. What is the mean? What is the standard? This is very basic, very basic, but you have to have steps. Mean, standard deviation, skew, kaha hai, ye hai, wo hai. You obviously always have to ha be in conversation with the business person, right? If I'm getting a certain lead as a data scientist and I'm not a pharm pharmacy, like with the pharma background, I always need to converse with someone from the business background saying, this is the mean that I'm getting, does it make sense? And the person will say, actually no, because you need to cluster it into different groups, for example. So exploratory data analysis is absolutely key. Before you make decision on what model or algorithm you want to apply. Now, once you've done your exploratory data analysis, EDA as we call it, then you start uh, playing with your algorithms. As a good data scientist, will at least play with three to five algorithms, right? They will always implement more than one, at least three to five, right? Because in order to make a good, better decision, an intelligent decision for an organization or for your research, you want to be absolutely sure, right? We eat we try it before we make the best one. We eat it for example, right? So this is what you your professional life. So you want to Look at three to five different results, and then you pick the best one. Now, how do you pick the best one? There's another process for that. You do a lot of, you do thing, you, you look at the significance of variables, but that's that's what you're doing in modeling. You look at the accuracy of the model. accurate. Now, to look at the accuracy of the model, there is again four or five different algorithms how we look at it. One is like confusion matrix, so on and so forth. All of that we teach. Um, and then once you've picked your model, how do you make sure it's a machine learning model, right? It comes with static data, right? You have about three years of data, I have model made, boom, done. But is that model actually going to keep on giving you the right results for the next ten years? Probably not. Why? Because the world is evolving, the characteristics and the demographics of people are changing, their needs are changing, people are generating different data. That's why diseases are decreasing. So, ten years ago, there were diseases prevalent. Now, there are more diseases prevalent, right? So, if the medical field is evolving, why isn't our approach to solve problems evolving, right? That's what we teach. How does a data scientist keep evolving with time? When I was doing the first joint, there were about six or seven years ago different algorithms, different things were being used. But now there are different algorithms that people are using. Why? Because the algorithms A have updated. Or the new algorithms that have been developed. So it's basically like a field of medicine, or you do your doctorate or something, where you keep on learning, you keep on developing, and you keep on improving yourself, right? To help you make better decisions or to cure patients in the right way. So that's what we're teaching. But we're not saying that by the end of this six month course, bus, it was 
there is you have to keep up to it right but you have to have the constant knowledge the constant passion to evolve yourself with changing age and with changing times have i answered your question amazing yes <laughs> So he's so so he's asked a very good two two great questions. So how do we make sure we digitize ourselves as an organization and is FTI going to help with that? And B, how do we make sure that our data is aggregated properly? Or with market with the basically current like basically data aggregation keeping in mind with the market that you're in essentially. So to answer your first question, is FTI going to help with data digitization? I mean, we're gonna teach our students the ability to manipulate data, right? Those are data scientists. When you talk about digitization, like converting data in forms into, I don't know, some Excel spreadsheet, I think that's an initiative that organizations need to take for a start. Um, but that's not something a data scientist is uh, equipped to do. All you need is someone who logs in the entry in the right format and the right database, essentially. So, and for a data scientist to be, um, well, to be very good at their job, essentially, they need to have all the data available in the right place at the right time as and when they need it. So for organizations to facilitate that, what they need to do is they need to organize themselves to start with. And that's where the strategy piece that I covered with Deloitte is when we go to an organization and they come up, come to us with this data science problem, we first say, do you even have this data stored somewhere? Because our team can't work if the data isn't stored somewhere and if we can't access it through API or whatever. So as organizations, which is going to be very surprising if organizations don't have databases. I hope that there are um, any sort of inpatient, outpatient forms. Now, like people need to start digitizing them because they have so much information, right? Um, so I think digitization is something that organizations need to take forward by themselves. But a data scientist is not someone who will do the digital, digital entry. That's not what their skills are. Um, the second question was around data aggregation, right? So, I mean, and this is a very broad question, right? So, I think to aggregate data, first we need to look within our organization, right? There are different departments within an organization, there are different systems. So, by the way, the organization can data aggregate very well. Most of the clients, or all of the clients that I've worked with, when I go and solve a problem, the first thing that I notice is the data is in silos. It's not talking to each other. HR data is different to finance data. Finance data is different to some other uh, data. We did a very interesting restructuring of a biggest professional services organization in the world who advise other people via strategy strategy But when they look within the own organization, their systems were siloed. They were not talking to each other. HR may be the salary, but the finance may salary is all paid. For example, why is that? That's a basic data silo problem. So first, organizations need to work towards aggregating their own data, towards normalizing it, making sure that the systems talk to each other. Finance may there's the biggest problem that there's legacy systems. So when the systems are there, for example, customer ID differently is recorded. Now, the systems and the customer ID is recorded differently. So now it's recognizing those two customers as two different customers, whereas it's just the same customer. So we need to be able to solve these problems. And how can we do that? We need to invest in the right tools and technology, right? A data scientist does not record or like create uh, data architectures or these stuff. These are different problems. Data engineers will help um, manipulate data, will help transform data, will help load data. So it's ETL, extract, transform, load. Data architect 
will help you okay set up the right architecture cloud on premise over user the data scientist comes in when you have this data and they come to business decisions now to aggregate data at a market level then that's another problem we first need to solve our own organization's application before we then head to the market saying oh, we collaborate this data with open source we can actually generate this decision essentially so so that's basically my take on that i hope i have answered your question yes thanks for some wonderful insights uh, my question is related to uh, more towards hr and people analytics i read in an article uh, that uh, world is moving towards uh, a situation where you can predict the retention. Uh, my supply chain director would leave the company in the next three months. There's a 65% chance or a 70 about They wanted to analyze A, like how, why do we hire people? For what? And why do they end up leaving? And how can we make sure that they stay, essentially? Typical organization challenge, people retention, and so on and so forth. So yes, these problems exist everywhere globally and organizations are, I think abroad they're already starting to tackle it. Here we have to obviously get up to speed with organizing our data sets before we start manipulating them. Um, but to on uh, how do we approach such a problem, I'll just give you an example from the work that I've done recently. So we basically got data from the HR, right? So why are people leaving? Basic question, why do people leave? So first, all our employees, all this organization, all my employees, that for example, I'm the organization, right? All my employees, I cannot, they're not the same characteristics, right? they're different employees. So we, for example, test the hypothesis, divide them between males and females, right? So the one key reason why females leave is when they get to manager, they get married, they have kids, and then they say, oh, can't come back. So that's one, right? The organization, the strategy that they devised was, start supporting females, allow flexible working, allow them to start working from home, give them the ability to work part-time, right? This is a data-driven decision, right? When we analyze it, so females are leaving at this grade. One. Another problem is I've hired someone for a technical skill, and I've basically promised them that you are going to be doing this work. Now, when, I, when we analyzed, because people log time against projects, right? When we analyzed, their time against different projects, they were actually not doing relevant projects. They were hired for, say, doing X, like uh, data engineering work, but they were ending up doing basic PowerPoint, right? So that was one reason. People are not, people are being hired for